continue with the exercise 10 question number 18 here there you are given a point 3 comma 8 and one line x plus 3y equals to 7 what you want you want the image of this point so image means if you are given this line here this is point a here 3 comma 8 let's call this is point a image means find the point uh, which is at a equidistance from this line on the other side so indirectly it's uh, you know this become the perpendicular let me call this as point B which coordinates I'll take uh, let me take a comma B coordinates B a comma B so what do you mean by here let me write B of a comma B with the image of a image of a it means two things the midpoint of this one is on this line number one and it is perpendicular to the given line okay so if this distance is for example two units then this is also two units if this distance is three then this is also three units point on the other side at the same distance if this is four unit then this is also four unit right that's what we understand by image in general okay now two concept we are going to use one is here the midpoint of a b will be on this line so it will satisfy this equation so let me find the midpoint here midpoint of line segment a b which will be 3 plus uh, a by 2 comma 8 plus b by 2 average this plus this by 2 this plus this by 2 okay but uh, this midpoint this midpoint is on the line it lies on the line which line x plus 3y equals to 7 so it will satisfy this equation it will satisfy equation means what instead of x you put this in place of y you put this so 3 plus a by 2 3 times 8 plus b by 2 equals to 7 we just simplify here so 3 plus a plus this is 24 plus 3y equals to 14 here sorry here it will be b y y i'm sorry so this is also b okay so this is a plus your 3b uh, this is how much here I'll take this expression over here so 10 plus 3 this is 13 equals to 0 we call this as equation number 1 here so midpoint concept we have used now uh, we will use that this line segment AB is perpendicular to the line now as line segment AB is perpendicular to the line so therefore the product of the slopes equals to minus 1 m1 m2 m2 equals to minus 1 we'll use this okay what is m1 that's the slope of the line segment ab y2 minus y1 which is b minus 8 upon x2 minus x1 that is nothing but the a minus 3 into slope of this line minus a by b which is minus 1 upon 3 equals to minus 1 okay now just we'll simplify so uh, here we'll get the b minus 8 equals to 3 into a minus 3 okay so b minus 8 equals to 3a minus 9 so here 3a will take the b on the other side so it will be minus b this is minus 1 equals to 0 so this is 2 from 1 and 2 now that is we just solve these two equations okay so I'll multiply equation number 1 by 3 Let me multiply 1 by 3 here so this is 3a plus 9b plus 39 equals to 0 this one as it is 3a minus b minus 1 equals to 0 we are just solving those two equations this is plus this is plus this will get cancelled this is 10b 
plus here how much 40 b equals to 0 so b equals to here minus 4 put the value of b in any one of these two so let's write by 1 here a what is b minus 4 so this is minus 12 plus 13 equals to 0 so here a will be minus 1 so therefore image will be image will be minus 1 comma minus 4 minus 1 and minus 4 question number 19 you are given three lines here first two lines y equals to 3x plus 1 and y 2y equals to I'll write y in form of y equals to 1 by 2x plus 3 by 2 this is the second line these two lines are uh, equally inclined it makes equal angle equally inclined here this is given to us inclined with this line with your line which line y equals to mx plus 4 y equals to mx plus 4 the question is get the value of m this is a question find small m that is the slope of the line okay so uh, so diagram will be like this for example this is one line given line here or let's take this is equals to uh, y equals to m y equals to mx plus 4 now here this is one line over here this is another line you are given that measure of these angle and these angle are equal that's given to you equally inclined means what the measure of angle of this line with this one for example let's say alpha measure of angle of the second line with this say beta then these two are equal that's given to you so here we need the slope of each of the given line so let me write here slopes slopes of uh, given lines given lines are m1 equals to first line 3 and m2 equals to second line 1 by 2 which concept are used y equals to mx plus c then the coefficient of x represent the slope so you just compare the first one with which one y equals to mx plus 3 so slope is 3 their slope is half slope of third line you know now so uh, it is small m therefore uh, as per given data as per given data that is this is given to you we use uh, uh, the 10 alpha formula your 10 alpha formula but these two are equal this is given to you in short alpha equals to beta as I've shown in the diagram What's the formula? M1 minus M2 upon 1 plus M1 M2. What is formula here? Same. M1 minus M2 upon 1 plus M1 M2. These two are equal. That's given to us. So M1 means the slope of the first line which is 3. M2 means second line. What is that? That is small m upon 1 plus 3 into m. Here m1 means the slope of that second line which is half this is small m upon 1 plus 1 plus we have half into m right i'll show you see it's like this slope of this line here which is m1 which is 3 this is small m so first we have used the formula for this 10 alpha equals to m1 minus m2 this we have called as m2 m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m2 so 3 minus m upon this here the slope of this one you can call this one as how much 1 by 2 so again 10 alpha formula between these two lines so we have this but you as per the data these two lines are equally inclined so these two angles are equal that's given to you okay now the question is uh, you need to simplify but before I just drop the modulus I'll take LCM here. So 1 minus 2M upon 2 plus M. Here 1 minus 2M upon 
uh, you know what 2 plus m okay now we drop the modulus so we have two possibilities either both are equal or they differ by minus sign you know plus or minus so 3 minus m upon 1 plus 3m equals to 1 minus 2m upon 2 plus m or the other possibility is 3 minus m upon 1 plus 3m equals to minus of 1 minus 2m upon 2 plus m here plus here minus now just do the cross multiplication just simplify so this will be quadratic equation in m so we'll get the values of m from this and similarly here also you simplify so we'll get the values of m from this right so this much you can do the only important step was this these two angles are equal therefore we have this okay Let's see next question. Question number 20. Hmm. The sum of the perpendicular distances of the point P, here you have a variable point P, point P where coordinates are x, y given to you. Okay, from these two lines, from the lines, okay, so we have two more lines here. One line is x plus y minus y equals to 0 and the other line is given by 3x minus 2y plus 7 equals to 0. Right? So distance of this point from this line plus the distance of the same point from this line it's equals to 10 that is given to you. Right? Given that sum of distances equals to 10 this is given to us okay what's given to us sum of the distance is equals to 10 so now we write the expressions for this two right? distance of this point from this line you know you have the prepared formula modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c so here x plus y minus y upon root of this square plus this square that is 1 plus 1 1 square plus 1 square plus now distance of the same point from this line so one more time same formula 3x minus 2y plus 7 upon root of a square plus b square so 9 plus 4 equals to 10 that is given to you okay I repeat see actually we have that ax1 plus by1 minus uh, that uh, phi equals to 0 but here x is that x only that's why we have that same line okay that variable point is x y now what we do the question is you just need to uh, simplify this but the one step you can do the cross multiplication here this is root 13 so root 13 is multiply here x plus y minus y your root 2 is multiplied here so this is 3x minus 2y plus 7 equals to how much? Uh, this is 10 into root 26. Root 2 into root 13. So root, that's root 26. Fine? Okay. So now we need to drop the modulus. So there are in fact plus or minus, plus or minus 4 possibilities. But we'll do just for one here. Root 13 we will assume that right now it is positive plus root 2 into 3x minus 2y plus 7 minus 10 root 26 equals to 0 what I did we have assumed that this is positive this is positive so once you drop the modulus it will be replaced by itself now here uh, you take x common from this 2 we want to show that this is a line so from this this is root 13 plus 3 root 2 into x now from this 2 we take y common so this is root 13 minus 2 root 2 into y root 13 to root 2 with minus sign plus constant term that is minus 5 into root 13 plus 7 root 2 
minus 10 root 26 equals to here 0 equals to 0 so this is in which form ax plus by this is a constant plus c equals to 0 so which is a line straight line right and therefore proved fine you wanted to show that if this condition you are given then the final equation represent a straight line now I did only for one case I've assumed that this is positive this is positive so both I wrote plus what are the other three possibility you can put plus sign here and minus sign here minus here and plus here and both are minus but in all cases you can show that it is a straight line question number 21 find the equation of line which is equidistant from the parallel lines this and this so you have two parallel lines like this these are the two parallel lines you can see that their slopes are equal now you need a line here which is at equidistance from these two. So that third line may be like this. This is the required line. Required line here. This is required line. So we take any point on this line, say P of X comma Y. This is any variable point. The question is we want the equation. Now as per the given data, if you get this distance, distance of the point P from the first line, this one, and the distance of the point P from the second line then both will be equal this distance and this distance is both are equal so uh, we are given this given that distance of the point P from the first line so which is modulus of 9x plus 6y minus 7 upon under root a square plus b square that is 9 square plus 6 square equals to now distance of the point P from the second line here. So modulus of 3x plus 2y plus 6 upon under root 9 plus 4. Right? Is it? What I did, I've used this formula twice. Small p formula. Modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c upon under root a square plus b square. This formula I've used how many times? Two times first this distance from the first line then the same distance from the second line here variable point i've taken as x y so that's how i placed here x y now we'll just simplify here uh, now what about this this is just root 13 so let me keep 3x plus 2y plus 6 upon root 13 here uh, what about this here 81 plus here 36 so this will be 117 root 117 so which is 39 sir. so you can take 9 outside so it will be 3 root 13 so I'll write directly here 3 root 13 fine 81 plus 36 it is this much taking 9 outside so it will be 3 root 3 root 13 13 will get cancelled here we have 9x plus 6y minus 7 equals to 3 times 3x plus 2y plus 6. So drop the modulus. So 9x plus 6y minus 7 equals to 3 into 3x plus 2y plus 6. Or the other possibility, the other possibility is minus. So here 9x plus 6y minus 7 equals to minus 3 into 3x plus 2y plus 6 plus or minus now here you see if you simplify the first one 9x 3 3 the 9 9x 9x will get cancelled 6y 6y will get cancelled minus 7 and 18 so here you are getting minus 7 equals to 18 this is not possible okay so just you need to simplify this only your 9x this is minus 9x so to take on the left hand side so 18x this is 6y here also 6y so this will be 12y fine and here you have minus 7 uh, and this is nothing but the minus 18 so over here plus 11 equals to 0 
and which is required equation which is required equation required line what is the most important step here this one the distance of the point p from this line distance of the point p from the second line then then just we have simplified here you have two possibility but one of the possibility is not possible so from the other question number 22 array of light passing through the point 1 comma 2 reflect on the x axis at the point a okay so just show two coordinate axis here this is y axis this is x axis this is the point a from the point here 1 comma 2 so this is 1 comma 2 ray passes through this here reflect at a so this is called you know angle of incidence okay and reflected ray passes through the point so this is one more point you have this is reflected ray this is called the angle of reflection this is a i'll call this as for example point p i'll call this as point q so that point q is y comma 3 here what is the question to get the coordinates of a so let the coordinates of a b x comma 0 because it is point on the x axis so y coordinate will be 0 so we just need you know x coordinate now this angle of you know incidence if i take this as alpha then you know that the angle of reflection is also alpha so these two angles are equal angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are equal we know it now here uh, this AQ makes an angle alpha with the positive direction of the x-axis. So slope of, you know, AQ can be obtained very easily, which is tan alpha, which is given by these two coordinates, y2 minus y1, that is 3 minus 0, upon x2 minus x1, that is 5 minus x. Fine? Slope of AQ. This is angle of the AQ with the positive direction of the x-axis okay and you can find the slope of you know ap also so you need to get the angle of this one with which direction positive direction of the x-axis now if this is alpha then what about this angle it will be obviously 180 minus alpha so you can get this 180 minus alpha this much is alpha then the angle of this line uh, AP with the positive direction of the x-axis 180 minus alpha. So slope of here AP which will be 10 of angle with the positive direction of the x-axis that is 180 degree minus alpha. Now what will be this? Again you have two points there. Y2 minus Y1 which is 2 minus 0 upon x2 minus x1 that is nothing but what? 1 minus x. Now if you simplify this one, pi minus alpha second quadrant. So your minus tan alpha equals to 2 upon 1 minus x. So therefore tan alpha equals to here. Tan alpha equals to what we'll get? 2 upon, I'll take minus 4 here. So x minus 1. Call this as 1. Tan alpha equals to this. Tan alpha equals to this. So from 1 and 2, we are just going to compare. From 1 and 2 tan alpha equals to tan alpha so therefore 3 minus 0 which is 3 upon 5 minus x equals to 2 upon x minus 1 just comparing these two and now we'll just simplify here so we have this by simplification so this is 3x here you have minus 2x so this will be 5x minus 3 plus 10 so it will be 13 so what is x from this therefore x will be here 13 by 5 and therefore what will be the coordinates of a which will be 13 by 5 comma 0 right you wanted x here so x will be 13 by 5 comma 0 and y coordinate is here 0 so this is a required point next question number 23 it's a good example. There you are given a line here. X upon A, 
cos theta plus y upon b sin theta minus 1 equals to 0 and you are given two points. What do you want to prove? The distance of this point from this line into distance of this point from this line equals to b square. That is the question. Prove that the product of the lengths of the perpendiculars drawn from these two points, these and this, to this line is b square. Okay. So here uh, we write product of, uh, you know, a product of lengths of perpendiculars that is P1 into P2. So P1 means from the first point. So how we'll do this? You know that modulus expression. X is replaced by this one. So this is root of A square minus B square upon A into cos theta. Here this is 0. So this expression will be 0. Minus 1 upon coefficient of x that is this much inside the square root. What is that? Cos square theta by a square plus here coefficient of y which is sine square theta by b square into now from the second point. Just here you have minus sign. That's the difference. So minus root of a square minus b square upon this a as it is cos theta as it is y is replaced by 0 so this will be 0 minus 1 upon root of coefficient of x what is that that is cos theta by a so cos square by a square plus coefficient of y which is sine theta by b so sine square theta by b square right you know this formula now we have used number of times here which formula you have used i'll just remind you modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c upon under root a square plus b square that formula you have used twice in the first case p1 x is replaced by this y is zero in the second case x is replaced by this y is zero okay now we just need to simplify this and at the end you will get the b square that's all in all about the solution now see here both these expressions are same so denominator expression is free from the square root root into root so cos square theta by a square plus sine square theta by b square right it will be free from the square root what about this here uh, you can uh, take LCM here so this will be root root of a square minus b square cos theta minus a your a is LCM okay and what about this here both minus so you can make them positive inside the modulus cos theta this minus this minus it will be plus a so here a LCM from here LCM from here so it will be you know a square so I'll keep that a square here fine why this minus and this minus positive it's like this uh, just recall if you have modulus of minus x minus y take minus common so it will be plus and you can write modulus x plus y if both are minus this can be done that property I've used here okay both are minus so you can take minus common so both will be plus okay now uh, what we'll do we uh, just do the cross multiplication over here and here this is like x minus y x plus y so inside the modulus what we'll get x square minus y square so it will be free from the root so a square minus b square into cos square theta minus a square what i did this is like x minus y into x plus y. You know very well this is nothing but what? x square minus y square with, within the modulus. So this will be free from the square root. This is cos square theta. This is minus a square upon do the cross multiplication here. So this is b square cos square theta plus a square sine square theta. And uh, what is LCM here? a square b square. So the denominator of the denominator becomes numerator. So this is a square b square. Now this will get cancelled. So we have just b square 
over here uh, at this place let me open the bracket so over here we'll get the a square cos square theta minus b square cos square theta minus a square upon let's keep this expression as it is here so b square cos square theta plus a square sine square theta fine now from this two you can take uh, you know minus a square common why minus a square so here we'll get the one minus cos square which gives us sine square so the next step here i'll keep remaining things as it is right now equals to b square as it is taking minus a square common from those two terms so it is one minus cos square theta what is this this is sine square minus b square cos square theta upon the denominator expression which we are just going to copy here okay what i did just taking minus a square common why minus a square so this will be one minus cos square now this is a square this is sine square theta minus b square cos square theta upon what is this b square cos square theta plus a square sine square theta okay now again both are minus so you can make them positive so a square sine square theta plus b square cos square theta as i've used earlier inside the modulus both are negative you can take minus common so both will be positive this is as it is here okay now you can see that this is purely positive number so you can drop the modulus and it will get cancelled with this so we have b square and therefore proved right you see what was the beginning product of lengths of this perpendicular p1 into p2 we have used this formula and we have just simplified at the end square at the end you are getting b square and therefore proved question number 24 your a person standing at a junction that is intersection point of two straight paths represented by these two equations okay so you are given these two lines 2x minus 3y plus 4 equals to 0 and the second one is 3x plus 4y minus 5 equals to 0 okay. we want the intersection of these two lines a person is standing at junction or intersection of these two he wants to reach to the path whose equation is this so we have one more equation here the person wants to reach this 6x minus 7y plus 8 equals to 0 okay in the least time then we want to get the equation of that path so let me draw the rough diagram so uh, we can understand very easily suppose i have two lines like this this is line number one this is line number two okay these are the two lines this would be a junction of these two lines i'll call that as point a this is one and this is two so to get the coordinates of a what you need to do we need to solve the equations of these two lines now the person wants to reach here over here there is one more equation suppose somewhere here fine person wants to reach here so what we'll do uh, in a least time here so least time means that person must choose the perpendicular path that's the shortest path so this is the path taken by the person okay least path so this should be perpendicular now the question is get the equation of this line equation of this path that's a question okay fine let me call this as am so am is our required path is this clear to your diagram these are the two intersecting lines. Person is standing at A. One more line you are given. That is by this equation. Equation number 3 you can call. From here to here. Person is moving from at A to this. In the least time it's written in the question. Okay. In the least time that means person must choose the perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance is always the shortest distance. Minimum distance. The question is now find the equation of path that he uh, should follow so we want the equation of am so the question is we find this is a question we find 
equation of what line am okay so to get the equation you must have a point and slope you know the slope of this line equation number three what's the slope of this line minus a by b that is six by seven so you can get the slope of m very easily and how do we get the point a by solving these two equations which two equations one and two now here let me write first slope of slope of what equation three slope of equation three equals to how much as i told you minus a by b which is six by seven therefore slope of our required line slope of path am which is equals to minus seven by six which concept you have used here m1 into m2 equals to minus one why this concept just let me remind you we want the shortest distance in a least time so this should be perpendicular path and therefore we have used this concept okay so now you got the slope of the required line am now what we need we need this point a what is a that is intersection of these two so solving equations one and two equations one and two if you solve these two equations of these two lines you will get the intersection point once you get the intersection point you have point you have slope so we'll get the equation of a b okay so let's solve these two equations here uh, i'll multiply first equation by three you know this is elimination method so 6x minus 9y plus 12 equals to 0 multiplying second equation by 2 so 6x plus 8y minus 10 equals to 0 multiplying first by 3 so 6 9 and 12 multiply second by 2 so 6 8 and 10 okay now we just change the sign minus minus this will be plus here this will get cancelled this is how much 17 y with minus sign this is plus you know 22 here so what is y coordinate it will be 22 by 17 okay now we put this in any one of these two equations so let's try it by one for example we need x here to 2x minus here into 3 so you have 66 by 17 plus 4 equals to 0 right so 2x equals to here if we simplify minus 2 by 17 and therefore x equals to minus 1 by 17 so here that intersection point a is given by minus 1 by 17 comma 2 by 17 that's the intersection point so you have point you have a slope and therefore the equation of line am therefore equation of line am that's that equation of that perpendicular path which is y minus y0 that's 22 by 17 equals to slope what's the slope minus 7 by 6 into x minus x1 that is plus 1 upon 70 okay which form you have used point slope form y minus y1 equals to slope into x minus x1 so we have this now we'll just simplify here so first taking 17 as lcm so we have this I'll take i'll take and 17 17 will get cancelled now i'll take 6 over here so 6 into 17 y minus 22 equals to minus 7 into 17 x plus 1 fine just taking that 6 on the left hand side so here 6 into 17 which is 102 into y minus 22 into 6 which is 132 here equals to 7 into 17 so it is 119 so 119 with minus sign into x and this is minus 7 and therefore now finally last step take this one on the left hand side so 119x plus 102 into y and taking 7 on this side so minus 125 equals to 0 this is the required path